Good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to let you know we'll be just a, a couple more minutes as we're waiting for a couple of folks. Good afternoon. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Ways and Means Committee. I'm John Quincy, the chair, joined by Councilmember Andrew Johnson, Councilmember Lene Palmasano, and Councilmember Blong Yang. Um, we're a quorum of the committee, so we can go ahead and begin. Uh, we have a number of items on the agenda today. Let's see here. 29 uh, on the consent agenda, and then we'll have a discussion item uh, from the Regulatory Services Department uh, about the adoption fee schedule for animal care and control. So that's what we'll be taking up uh, as the discussion item. But before that, we have uh, three items from the city attorney's office, all are legal settlements. The uh, city coordinator's department brings forward a contract amendment with employee strategies for human capital consulting services, as well as a grant acceptance from the Bush Foundation for youth engagement. Uh, grant acceptance from KC Family Programs for Youth Engagement. Finance and Property Services uh, Department brings forward the financial status and cash management. This is the investment report as of the third quarter, 2016. Also been joined by Councilmember uh, Bender and Council Vice President Glidden. Uh, so the third quarter report and the contract for commissioning services for the new East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility as well as the termination of the railroad easement on city-owned land at 340 27th Avenue Northeast. Uh, security guard services for city facilities. This is a three-year contract with two one-year extensions with Securitas Security. And charter language amendment for the use of premiums related to in a bond sale. Information Technology Department brings forward a contract amendment with IDSIS uh, for IDE supplies and services, a contract with Priority Dispatch Corporation for 9-11 call handling protocol software, a contract amendment with EMA for Maximo so software support, and a contract amendment with OpenGov.com, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Inc. for budget and financial information sharing software. The executive committee refers a collective bargaining agreement with the Minneapolis Association of Fire Chiefs. Um, from the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee, which is a little out of uh, sync uh, with the uh, our calendar. They have not met yet, but it'll be meeting tomorrow. We have the conduit bond policy, as well as modifications for a tax increment finance plan for several TIF districts, and a contract amendment with the Regents of the University of Minnesota for traffic management services at TCF Bank Stadium. From the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee, we have the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, grant uh, to Minneapolis Animal Care and Control for staff training. Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Committee brings forward the City uh, Joint Powers Agreement with Minnesota Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue Team, contract amendment with Hennepin Healthcare System, and Minnesota Board of Firefighters Training and Education, Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant Training Reimbursement, and a fire truck donation to the uh, Bill and Bonnie Daniels Firefighters Hall and Museum. Transportation and Public Works Committee brings forward the Anderson School Pedestrian Crossings and Bikeway Project, funding agreement with Mississippi Watershed Management Organization for Southwest 
or Southeast uh, Watershed Modeling Project, 49th Avenue North and Queen Avenue North bridges over Shingle Creek, uh, sanitary sewer cleaning, it's a contract amendment with uh, Sewer Services Inc. and a bid for parking ramp intercom systems project. Uh, are there any questions or comments on any of those 29 items? No. Not seeing any, all in favor of the consent items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, those all go forward. Thank you very much uh, for uh, all the staff and the committee work that brought those forward. Which brings us to the uh, discussion item. Uh, which is a uh, presentation or a discussion on the 2006 uh, animal care and control fee schedule. So you could introduce yourself. Welcome. Yes, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Carolyn Herefield. I'm the deputy director for Minneapolis Animal Care and Control. Um, back in uh, the spring, uh, part of the discussion around our ordinance uh, adoption of our new ordinances, um, Mac was asked to look at our fee schedule and um, do a, a fee analysis on what it actually cost us to prepare animals for adoption. Um, as you know, uh, animals at MAC can uh, leave our building four different ways. Um, the first way we try to reunite animals with their owners. Um, if we cannot do that, we, we try to adopt them or transfer them to other releasing agencies such as rescues or other facilities or uh, in the worst case scenario, we do have to euthanize occasionally. Um, part of the, the ordinance uh, mandates was that the animals have to pass a behavioral exam, they have to pass a medical exam, they must be sterilized before leaving our facility, they must be vaccinated against contagious diseases, they have to be microchipped, and they must be safe to return to the public both behaviorally and mentally. During our analysis, um, the standard test supplies that MAC uh, uses to um, prepare these animals cost MAC approximately uh, $337.65 per dog and approximately $274.43 per cat. That does not include the personnel time um, and it, of course, does not include Include the average cost of food miscellaneous stuff that we utilize. If I could interrupt you, Mr. Mm -hmm. real quickly. Do you have a presentation? Is this being uh, broadcast or is this just this something I have broadcast. a copy of? Pardon me. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Members, Noah Shuckman, Director of Regulatory Services. We uh, realized as we sat down here that we do not have the presentation pulled up. It is available online as part of the agenda item. And so it's there and available to you. Okay. Uh, but I apologize for not having it up on the screen this afternoon. I, that's that's f absolutely fine. I just wanted to clarify that, especially for any audience members. Yes. Um, would it be helpful for you to share with one uh, on the opaque projector? Yep. Is that it. something? I have a, a printed copy if you'd like to do that. I thought we might be able to just kind of review a couple of those slides before we... Sure. Sorry about that. Yeah. And for my colleagues, the uh, clerk's... Uh, Ms. Giesler has just emailed us a copy if it's a little easier for you to follow along. Thank you. Right. Good. Okay, as I was saying that um, the cost of standard test supplies um, are $337.65 for dogs and $274.43 for cats with an approximate $113 in staff time that's spent um, preparing these animals. We compared our cost uh, to uh, comparable um, veterinarian clinics in the area, Banfield in Minneapolis and Camden Pet Hospital. Um, the standard supplies to do the same thing uh, that we're doing with our animals at each one, uh, roughly $543 to $718 actually was what we found uh, for dogs and $363 to $501 for cats. We also compared uh, Minneapolis to municipal-run facilities in the area, uh, that being Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, in Minneapolis, we take animals in, as does St. Paul. Um, we provide these services, which, uh, which includes heartworm testing and leukemia testing and sterilizations and such. Um, St. Paul doesn't do any of those things. Um, they uh, Basically, they will adopt if the animal's already sterilized when it comes into their care, it doesn't receive any medical care while it's there. Um, 
Mac is currently adopting dogs to residents for $50 and cats for $50 and then for non-resident, $250 for dogs and $100 for non-resident. Whereas uh, St. Paul is adopting $47 for residents and $224 for non-residents. And the adopter must still then go and have all these services performed. Generally speaking, they send them to AHS um, and they perform the same services we do. Yes, sir. Very clear. I just wanted to uh, check in. Uh, Councilmember Yang had a question. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, on, let's see, on slide, on this slide right here, I mean, it says dog 405. Is that a misprint? I mean, because if you look above in the previous page, it's 450. Where, where are you looking? The uh, cost on the competitively priced services on page five. As shows a four four fifty point sixty five, and then it translates to four oh five. I think it's a um, they added the cost of the personnel cost into it. Right, right. Uh, well, no, I, I I'm just asking. It's minor thing, basically. Um, the previous oh. page shows. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, total services. I think it is a misprint. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. yeah, not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thanks. So. Um, just transpose those two numbers. Yes, but, we did. But the, uh, the the cost includes personnel in both of those cases. Yes, sir. And uh, does the Animal Humane Society, does that include the, uh, in, in St. Paul's example, does that include a cost? St. Paul doesn't personnel? actually perform those, right. those at all, so uh, no, it does not. Okay. So the, uh, the services for the chipping... Uh, for the sterilization, things like that. Is that done? Is that required in St. Paul, for example? On the it's required end? in it's required in city law, and the sterilization part is required in state law. I see. Okay. And where are those services performed? At the doctor's office, separate before adoption or after adoption? For which for us, it's before. In St. Paul, it is where it, after. Okay. So in St. Paul, they pay the 200, and if you were a non-resident, they would pay the $224 and then have an additional cost to them. So they would still have to pay out, out of their pocket the full cost of sterilization, the full cost of if they wanted the dog microchipped, or, and of course they have to have a rabies vaccination and, okay. and that sort of thing. Thank you. So one of the things that we're doing at MAC and we're, is trying to be very responsible at putting out animals that are healthy and that are not a burden to their new adopters. Um, and that also promote um, the, the mission of MAC, part of the mission of MAC, which is to basically turn the spigot off for unwanted pets or the overpopulation of pets, pets by assuring that they are sterilized before they leave our facility. In 2014, when the adoption initiative went forward, um, the fees at MAC actually were raised so there's going to be some discrepancy here uh, with the 2015 showing the uh, adoption revenue being higher. Um, but um, as you can see, there's, it's, it's pretty, stand, the number of animals that are leaving our facility are, are pretty, pretty much the same. How are those uh, outlined? What, what are the number of animals leaving the facility? Where are they at? If you flip over to page um, eight. Ah, the next page. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, in 2014, roughly 38 cats were adopted to residents and 25 cats were adopted to non-residents. I'm sorry, that's quarter one and two. And then you see in 2014, it went down slightly, 14 and 14. And then in 2016 in quarter one, it's back up to 28 to 19. So we have seen a, a slight increase in the residents adopting in the city in 2016. Mr. Schickman, I was wondering, could you perhaps say why do you see that that shift is happening? Is it because of the pricing discount available to uh, residents or is it uh, more market driven? Is it you know, availability, a website? Are you guys doing a great job of sir? marketing? I, you know, I, we're, we're doing a lot of marketing, um, and I think, I think the improvement in the services that we're providing for, for the quality of services that you're getting for 
your buck basically I think is improving um, our adoption rates and um, you know some of it we just we're not sure yet it hasn't there hasn't been enough time to, to analyze that okay Uh, Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Harfield, with regards to the comparisons between Minneapolis and St. Paul, did you uh, did you all go a little bit further to check on, let's say, suburban cities or other uh, municipalities in Minnesota just to see, you know, where they compare, or can we just take a guess that they're just pretty much? There's not a lot of municipal facilities in okay. in, in Minnesota. Um, I we did do some studies um, on different shelters that there are more private sheltering agencies like AHS and we're pretty we're still pretty comparable um, in what well we are comparable in the services that we provide but also the cost analysis is about the same so it's it's pretty comparable okay thank you mm -hmm. uh, mr. chair committee members at this point that's the end of the presentation we have uh, either Caroline or I are happy to stand for any questions if you have them well, I'm just uh, running through uh, a couple of the um, slides here that we didn't look like we compared. Uh, this seems like a pretty comprehensive uh, answer to our staff direction question, which was, what are the costs being experienced and, and how are we going to, on a recovery basis? Uh, what are the, what's the action for today uh, that you're asking for? Are you talking about a fee schedule? Um, Mr. Chair, committee members, I believe that our intent was this, that this was simply a report back on the on the dollars that we found when we dug deeper into the costs, and, and it, we were intending it as a receive and file. Um, we did not come with a specific recommendation around changes, in part because I know there was a great deal of com uh, conversation on the council floor about that when the ordinance came mm -hmm. through in the spring, um, and so uh, we were deferring that to you for at least to start that next piece of that conversation. So it's being presented in this committee as a uh, staff direction response. Is it being shared with another committee? I know animal care and control reports technically to PC, right? Uh, Mr. Chair, committee members, that's correct. Uh, the staff direction was specific to bring it back to Ways and Means, and so that's okay. what we've done to this point. Okay. And I think it would be appropriate at some point that uh, the fee schedule be looked at and as part of our budget process as we're adopting that into the uh, next cycle. So we'll, er, yeah, within the next month. So we're going to be looking at making sure that the fee schedule matches up with these uh, costs and what we're experiencing and, and how we can recover those costs and, and still provide the great service that we are to our residents and non-residents alike for the adoption of safe and friendly pets. Good. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions from my colleagues on the uh, presentation on today's item. Not seeing any, I think I'd like to just move then for as a receive and file item for this with uh, appreciation to the department for bringing forward the uh, information. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, and that item carries. Thank you very much everybody. I think that exhausts our agenda, so we are adjourned. <laughs>